D-E Psych. Starting off the week with a little George Strait. Starting to get a little nostalgic about my seniors. So I've been playing some songs that are memorable to me um, as we get closer to this graduation day with the class of 2020. Um, have a little bit of a longer video today, not because we have a lot of information, but mostly a lot of reminders of things going on. So um, bear with me and let's talk about a few things. First of all, remember that our final, you have your final year project that you should sign up for a movie and get moving on that. You can get that done and be done with the final. Um, that is totally fine by me. Uh, and then just keeping up with the classwork. Um, I'm gonna lower George here. Um, we also have our last of our readers notebooks, plural, because there's two chapters. So the personality and social psych readers notebook, I thought I would expose you to social psychology, even though it looks like we're not gonna get to uh, any of social psych in lecture format. Um, so make sure you're getting those done by Sunday. That's this upcoming Sunday, um, May 17th at 11.59. PM. Um, and then the last thing, a reminder about your letters, doing, following the video instructions, uh, self-addressing a envelope. You do not need to stamp it. You do not need to seal it. I still need to put those other letters that are in my room into your envelope. Um, so those can be dropped off at the school on Tuesdays and Fridays, anytime between 9 and 2 p.m. All right, so those are all of my reminders of things going on. Let's go ahead and jump to week nine here. Um, ninth week, this is the uh, second to last week. Uh, have um, some announcements there you might want to read. Let's jump in right over here to our quarantine week nine. This week's participation, we have something that's uh, kind of special that Mr. Dupree and I are trying to do for our seniors. So if you'll follow the directions for the participation, uh, juniors, there's directions for you also. So make sure to take note of those. That'll get you your participation points for this week. Please turn those in by Friday, May 15th at 11.59. All right, so we're gonna jump to Monday here. We've been looking at, let me go ahead and jump right into here um into our powerpoint and we've been looking at personality perspectives we've taken a look at the psychoanalytic that was most of last week uh last friday we looked at our trait theorists and some of you took the kirzy it was good to talk to some of you talk to you about your kirzy letters um keep in mind those kirzy letters can change in maybe two years you are not the same exact Kiersey letters, or maybe a tie that you have has gone into a more um, settable trait. So today we're gonna take a look at the humanists, the importance of self-fulfillment um, of potential. So looking at those little humanists, we haven't done a lot of humanist examination. So we're gonna look at what the humanists say about the self. Um, I will post this note sheet. You are welcome to print it, especially for those of you that might be taking a personality class next year. I know some of you are taking uh, in college a level 200 psychology class and getting into more specifics, a whole semester about one of these units, subunits that we've been doing. So um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna pull up my copy. You are welcome to make a copy of this for your own files. Um, and uh, let's talk about the humanists. So our humanists, very different from the Freudians, from the psychoanalytics, they studied healthy people. And um, instead of looking at individual traits, like our trait theorists, they studied the whole person. That's why we use that pinky to show the humanists, because they're studying the whole person, even though it's part of a bigger system. One of the biggest theorists of the humanists was Abraham Maslow. And I'm going to have you guys watching a video on Maslow and doing an activity on Maslow here. So I'm going to kind of skip through Maslow um, in my notes because you're going to do a little bit more intense with him. He's one of the biggest of the humanists, and his theory is called 
the um, the Maslow's theory of hierarchical needs. So, <laughs> um, and the aim of that theory is to become a self-actualized individual. So I'll let the video talk to me more about that. You then had other humanists like Carl Rogers, who believed that all humans were actually born good, that other things happen to us, that um, causes us to become wayward from our good intentions. Um, he talked about what we called the ideal self versus the actual self that we have an ideal of who we want to be and we're constantly working to that what we want to be but who we are actually is short of that ideal and trying to find the congruency between the ideal self and the actual self is what we constantly deal with and that's how our personality is kind of developed is dealing with that finding that congruency um the humanists talk a lot about self-esteem, that self-esteem is what really kind of makes up our personality. Um, whether we have a high self-esteem, we have what we would call fewer maladaptive behaviors when you have a higher self-esteem versus a lower self-esteem. Um, a lot of times self-esteem, even though it's not a causation, there is a correlation between low self-esteem and depression and anxiety and things like that. Um, so the humanists really focus on that uh, idea of self-esteem um, because when you have a lower self-esteem, you have a disparaging attitude, possibly racial prejudice, being judgmental versus a higher self-esteem. You have more acceptance of others is what we tend to see. So, of course, the idea is working on the self-esteem. Um, let's go right here. So healthy self-esteem, though, does, isn't free of issues either. Working towards a healthy self-esteem is great, but also people who have a healthy self-esteem tend to do things that may not be always as healthy. They're not, they're not bad for you, but they're not as super healthy. And if you go to an extreme of a healthy self-esteem, then we'd be looking at some narcissistic tendencies. So... Um, what do people with a healthy self-esteem do? Well, we tend to take credit for good things and successes and find reasons for bad things and failures. So help people with healthy self-esteem can make excuses. And that's not good. <laughs> if any of you have ever taken performance psychology, we talk about the science of making excuses and how it actually um, keeps us from achieving our goals. So healthy self-esteem can come with the self-serving bias where we feel like we have to hold up that self-esteem and we'll make excuses for our failures, which is not a good, good thing. Um, most people with a healthy self-esteem will rate themselves better than average. Fewer people with a healthy self-esteem will rate themselves below average. If you have a low self-esteem, those people tend to relate themselves below average. Um, this isn't a good or bad thing, but it can lead to what we've talked about in our former unit, a confirmation type of bias. Okay. Um, we tend to remember and justify our past in self-enhancing ways when we have a self-serving bias. So maybe something that happened in our past, we tend to kind of exaggerate it. I know that parents love to do this and talk about their glory days in high school and how they were the hero of the football game or whatever it may be. And maybe that's just slightly exaggerated. OK, but of course, that could be unhealthy, especially unhealthy if the child is expected to live up to those self enhanced memories. Um, we overestimate how well we think we would behave in a situation. Uh, those of us with an extremely self healthy self-esteem, and if you're not aware of your self-serving bias, you can be like, oh, I would never do that. Well, of course you can say that, but until you're in the situation, you may not know how you would react. Um, we're more likely to be leave flattering descriptions of ourselves when you have a self healthy self-esteem. Um, and we'd like to, and that's not a horrible thing. We just have to be careful and remember that there is, um, that there is a reality of us too. Um, 
And then we tend to overestimate how much others support our opinions. And of course, our modern technology doesn't help that. Um, we tend to believe that everybody's in cahoots with us um, when you have a self-serving bias. And that may not be true. Um, maybe people aren't speaking up or maybe you're getting an algorithm on your Facebook that only posts things that it knows that you agree with. So you have to be careful with that self-serving bias. So healthy self-esteem, good, but there is an extreme, just like there is with anything. Um, and of course, if you have a self-serving bias and you have a group of people with that same self-serving bias, that can be that can lead to a type of group think. Uh, people that are maybe a group pride that are doing things that may be um, hurtful to others. Uh, we see that in schools, okay? Cliques or crowds of people that have such a self-serving bias that they bully other groups of people. Um, now, those who have a um, unhealthy self-esteem, a low self-esteem, um, they may tend to act on that low self-esteem, not have confidence, not be brave in trying new things, things like that, uh, have uh, actual diagnosable um, issues such as depression and anxiety. But also those with unhealthy self-esteem will do things like fishing. So fishing, I'm right here on this reading, fishing is when people will knock themselves down and say things like, I'm just so not smart, not because they truly believe it, but that they want people to lift them up. They're fishing for the compliment. They want to get reinsurance that, no, you're really smart. Okay. And that helps them, that extrinsic words helps them to lift their confidence for a short time. But then what happens is if they don't have that reinforcement um, of what they're good at, then they feel that low self-esteem. So they're constantly fishing for that compliment or they're preparing themselves to fail. I'm going to fail this test because they don't want to hurt their own expectation. So they make their expectations low. So these are unhealthy things. And remember, this is all from that humanist perspective of how we, um, how they see our personality um, develops. And for them, it's about your self-esteem. Is it at a healthy level or an unhealthy level, whether that's low or high? Um, so the humanists, though, that's kind of the humanists in a nutshell. You're going to look at um, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs theory. Um, the humanists, when we evaluate the humanists, they do reflect a very individualist culture, which is in the United States versus looking at some Latin American cultures or Asian cultures that are not as individualized. Um, some of the criticisms is that they're vague and subjective and also that they fail to recognize the human capacity for evil that maybe people aren't all born good, that there is um, some sort of innate ability to have a personality of evil intentions. So um, that's the humanists. So what I'm having you guys do is you'll jump into your week nine onto Monday's work. And you'll see here that it says, watch the Maslow video number four. So you've watched this lecture. Now watch the Maslow video, which is like three minutes long. And then you've been assigned one of five scenarios that you'll need to do. What are those scenarios? Well, after you watch Maslow's video about how the hierarchy of needs works, you're going to be given a scenario. You're gonna decide which of Maslow's hierarchy of needs the character of your scenario is at, which of those levels. You're gonna explain why you think they're at that level of the hierarchy. Then you're gonna tell me how did your character um, achieve the levels below them to get to that level. That makes more sense once you look at the theory. And then what do you think will need to happen for your character to achieve the next level? So kind of a fun one. Uh, there's some extra credit involved in there. If you read your worksheet, it'll tell you how you can get that extra credit. So once again, 
We've taken a look here at the humanists. You can tell already what we're going to be doing on Wednesday. We'll be looking at the social cognitive school of thought in regards to personality development. And uh, I think, oh my gosh, that is it. All right, guys. So we'll be talking to you soon. Enjoy your day and keep going, guys. We're almost there. my life complete